What if creating Zapier automations was as simple as having a conversation? Well, now it is with Zapier's AI Copilot. The Copilot is your new shortcut to building powerful workflows using plain English. Just describe what you want and watch as it transforms your words into real usable automations, saving you dozens of clicks along the way. Or at least that's what Zapier promises. But does it really live up to the hype? In this video, I'll show you exactly what this AI assistant can do, both its promising strengths and its surprising limitations. Let's get started. To begin, log into Zapier and create a new Zap. You can navigate to the top left, click on Create, and click on Zaps. After your canvas loads, you'll see this Copilot window up top. This is where we're going to actually enter in our prompt to help us generate this Zap a little bit faster. So what we're going to want to do in this Zap, we're going to ask the Copilot to trigger based off of a new record appearing in this closed one view inside of Airtable. After a new record appears in this view, it's gonna send a Slack message, and then it's gonna also create a Google Calendar event. Now this Copilot is in beta, so don't ask it to do a 10 step process and don't be overly specific with certain accounts or views or individual details that you want the Copilot to insert for you. Instead, keep things limited to the specific steps and applications that you want the Copilot to insert for you. It's really meant to remove clicks for the person building the zap, not to completely configure every individual option. Let's give the copilot our simple prompt and let's see what it comes up with. All right. When a new project record is added to a closed one view in Airtable, send an alert about it to Slack with a link to the record. Then create a new event in Google Calendar with project details. Use the x-ray tutorials at Gmail accounts for all three apps. All right, so our copilot has decided to give us three steps here on the left, one for Airtable, Slack, and Google Calendar. All what I asked for, which is great. And the individual steps for each app seem to be correct. So we're gonna add all these steps to our Zap and then check if it configured everything correctly. Now, the first thing I notice here is that the account is wrong. I asked it, if we scroll up, to use the x-ray tutorials at gmail.com account. And here on the first trigger step, my account is selected as Tom at xray.tech. So I'm going to change that to use x-ray tutorials. And then I could configure this step. So I could click on configure here, but we're going to continue to use the copilot and we're going to click on configure step on the bottom left. And when I do that, we see that my base and my view have been selected for me, which is great, but I do need to configure the table. You can tell that this is required because of this little red asterisk here. Huh. But that's not selectable. We're gonna use a static value. So interestingly, it picked the wrong base. So there was no table for it to choose from, but it entered in the right custom value of the view. If we go over back to Airtable briefly, we see closed one is the right, is the right view, but the table wasn't selected. So somehow it got the right view, but the wrong base and the wrong table. If I look at my prompt, it's because it used the exact quoted view. So it just manually entered that in and it hard coded it instead of selecting it. So if you quote something inside your prompt, it might enter in a hard coded value instead of picking the view from the correct table and base. But I digress, let's continue. So you can see it's trying to configure these various options inside of the configure step, but it's still not configuring them correctly. So it's definitely an improvement, at least it's trying now, but I would still double check it. So let's test this step and move on to Slack. All right, again, our account is wrong here. So we're gonna update this to be our X-Ray Tutorials account. Now inside of the configure step, I'm gonna click open step 
and it's gonna open up the configure menu. And then I'm gonna click configure step again. And it tries to configure the Slack step as well. And it's given us message text that tries to link to the right record inside of Airtable, but it's missing the base and the table. So this record ID is useless if I were to click on this as a full URL. So let's finish configuring these the correct way. We're gonna add a static value for the tutorials channel. And inside of message text, this is also not Slack syntax. Slack uses the less than sign with a URL. We're gonna fix this URL. So we're gonna head on over to here. If we open this record, we get a full blown URL, which we can then add into here and delete everything after REC, that slash right there. And to be in Slack syntax, we are gonna put a pipe here and say, check it out. That syntax will URL encode the URL into the words, check it out using Slack. Zapier just doesn't know that. The rest of this configuration step, I'm gonna leave as is. I also wanna note that it did actually choose a bot name, Project Alert Bot, which isn't bad. Um, and it did not actually add anything else. All right, time to test. When I click on test, it goes through the test process. I can see on the left here that the tested step was successful. And now it's beginning to work on the create detailed event step in Google Calendar. Again, I see that my account selected is robots at X-Ray, which is not the account that I wanna use. I'm gonna update this to be the X-Ray Tutorials account. All right, now in the Copilot, I'm gonna click on open step. It is already open, but now it takes me to the configure menu. And then I'm gonna have it configure this step for me. We see some successful and some errors coming in from the copilot. It's pretty standard. So it filled in, it says it filled in the reminders. I'm gonna tell it to configure this step again because it seems like it had a problem. My calendar is x-ray tutorials at Gmail. <laughs> All right, it's not doing it. This just isn't working here on the create detailed event. I'll just configure this manually and we can move on. All right, test step. Fantastic. If you need some help building your zaps and the copilot isn't cutting it, then you should reach out to low code engineers. With LCE, you can get one on one expert support with tools like Zapier and any other software with an API. Your vetted engineer will help you implement your solution during a collaborative call so you can learn while you build. Progress guaranteed. Just go to lowcodeengineers.com to book your first hour. There's no commitment. Just book the time you need whenever you want. Use discount code X-Ray for 50% off your first hour. Now let's get back to building. Next, we're gonna try to add a filter before the calendar step. We wanna see if we ask the copilot to only continue to the final Google Calendar step if the spec sheet attachment field isn't empty. So I'm gonna paste that in here and we're gonna see if the copilot actually understands that it needs a filter in order to do this. It does. So we're gonna add this filter condition and it does add it before the Google Calendar event, great. And it's starting to actually configure this filter step. And I'm gonna click on configure. Spec sheet exists. That looks right to me. And since we see this little yellow bubble here, that means that the spec sheet does not actually exist, even though that variable is being identified. So we're gonna click test. And Zapier notes that it would have stopped. This filter would have stopped the automation from continuing because there is no spec sheet inside of the test data inside the trigger. Perfect. So now this zap is done and I'm gonna click continue and publish. Awesome. 
One really huge limitation that I have to note here is that Zapier Copilot cannot add paths. So when I directly ask it to create a new path at the end of the zap, it says, sorry, I could not get a result for paths by Zapier. Would you like to try using another app? No, I wanna add paths to my Zapier. I could do it manually here by clicking the add step and then using this paths module right here. But the copilot just doesn't know how to add a path to a Zap, which is just a shame. And hopefully sometime soon that gets an update. So wrapping up here, this is probably useful for first time builders or builders trying to do something new, but really the most useful parts about Copilot are just picking the app and the individual step that you actually want that app to perform. Whether as a trigger or an individual action after the trigger, that is the best way to use Copilot. It just saves you a few clicks and is really a fast way of building a bigger automation or three to five steps with just plain language. I was pretty impressed with the filter. It did actually set that up accurately, which could be useful if you're not really familiar with the filter and formatter steps that Zapier has. However, it does configure these types of steps pretty inconsistently. Uh, especially if you're trying to be specific about something inside of the filter or inside of an individual step, uh, you kind of have to know what you're doing in order to correct it and make sure it still does what you want to do. So as a beginner, it's not going to be all that helpful, but it is better than it used to be. Zapier's AI Copilot has come pretty far since they first rolled it out. It still has some serious limitations though, and I'd like to see Zapier make it a more fully functional tool for building complete automations. But don't worry, I'll keep an eye on it for you. If this video helped you out, like and subscribe to the channel for more AI and automation updates every single week. You can find me and my company X-Ray by searching for X-Ray Automation on nearly every social media platform. But for now, I've gotta go. So until next time, find your focus and stay in flow.